I've put together a couple demonstration files. These are not files that you're going to find in the exercise files folders, but some things that I put together because I wanted to show you some particularly cool things that can be done inside the web viewer. In the last movie that we just did, we talked about how we can have some text show up as long as we wrap it in HTML and as long as we use the prefix, uh, which we refer to as a data URL. So if you recall, what we did there is we had some text that was instructing our users to uh, populate the address fields before a map could be drawn. So instead of trying to draw the map with some uh, field references, we just had some text show up. <clears throat> and if you even have a limited uh, knowledge of HTML, you know that any text that you put in between these tags can show up. So, for example, instead of the instructions that we did in the last exercise, you see that I can just change some information. So what you're seeing that I have here is a demo file. Again, not in the exercise files, but something I just set up for you to show you a couple of concepts. And on the left-hand side, what I've got is a web viewer. And on the right-hand side, I just have a field. And as you can see, the web viewer, after I type something into the field and commit it, is just uh, rendering whatever text I write. So the idea here is that I can show you on the right-hand side uh, what it takes to actually have something appear on the left-hand side. So again, this is how you get a, a piece of text to show up in a web viewer. <clears throat> Of course, you could have an HTML file that's being hosted on a web server, but in this case, we're just putting it right into a field, or we could have put it right into the web viewer setup, but we have to make sure to show the data URL first. So let me take this one step further. This is the idea of this demo is to kind of uh, show you what's possible inside these web viewers. Now what I've done is I've still got the web viewer, and it's still showing the information on this side, but instead of having just that HTML information that's showing the text. Instead, what I've done is I've uh, put in some uh, CSS and sort of style sheet information to, instead of showing text, to show a box or to show a square with a certain color on it. Of course, I could manually change, you know, what's, what it says inside the box, maybe the color of the box. I could even change the size if I'd like to. <clears throat> or the location of the box within the web viewer. Now, keep in mind that I'm just manually changing this data here inside this folder, but if you, you kind of get the idea that if this wasn't a text field, if it was maybe a calculation field or a, a concatenated set of a bunch of fields, I could have a field that just does how uh, close to the top, how close to the left, the height, the width, even the color, I could have all those be input fields, or those could be something where I'm using the calculation engine to drive this information. So that's kind of part of what I wanted to sort of help you see to kind of get your imagination going. And also, I could do the same for the text that shows up inside of this box. Here, I could type this over and put our hello world message. Now, of course, this assumes that you have a little bit of understanding of HTML and CSS. And as I go forward, I'll be using some JavaScript here. But I really want you to understand how powerful the web viewer is and how powerful uh, using the data URL with HTML uh, certainly can be. So let's take this even one more step further. Now, you see what I'm doing in step three is that I'm showing an image. Now, this is another little thing that I've stumbled across that I wanted to share with you. I have another file here that I call image. And in this file, um, this is sort of a demonstration file that I put together. Uh, there's not much to it. You can easily extrapolate from what I'm doing. Um, but when FileMaker 12 came out, we discovered a really interesting new tag. And this was a URL syntax that allowed us to point to a database. So in this case, I'm pointing to the ISO image database and a layout called ISO image. You see that here. And the field is called image. So I've got this field set up in the database. You see here it's called image. It's a container field. It's even got external storage on it. And what I'm doing in that case is, let's say we just blow that out. And if we look at our demo file, we'll see that that'll affect. Um, we've already pulled this in, but that'll affect uh, the next time somebody loads this because you can see I'm putting that exact same image reference into my HTML. So what I'm doing here, what we found out was kind of interesting, is if you insert a picture 
into the container. Let's try that again. So this is empty. Okay, so we'll say, if I insert a picture into that field, you'll see what happens is that now it automatically shows up in a web viewer, and the web viewer is just simply pointing to that address. Now you can freeze this and feel free to use this code, but all we're doing is just using this same string that we stumbled across. And the key to this string here is that it's going FileMaker, XML, and then forward slash CNT and forward slash data.png. Now these are PNG files, so uh, you can change that uh, extension if you'd like to. But this was a way that we found that we could store images inside, <clears throat> that we could store images inside of a hosted FileMaker file inside of a container, even with external storage and then still be able to reference the contents of those containers within our interactive HTML. So you'll notice here, instead of having that box, what I've done instead, still use some CSS to talk about the position. You notice that I can manipulate that if I like to as well. But what I did when I referenced the image, you'll see this information here. I gave it a little bit of padding, but here's that string. The string that just simply finds the record, points to the file, points to the layout, and then uh, points to the container. And then I give it some sizes, and you know this is the height and width that I want to show that at. So uh, a really neat way to incorporate the uh, contents of a container field into your HTML uh, that's being presented inside of a web viewer. So this is a neat way to allow your users to drive this. So again, I'm trying to show you different ways to use your imagination to make uh, this web viewer interactive and dynamic at the same time. So let's take this even a step further. <clears throat> okay, I know what you're thinking now. We've gone way past the HTML, but really all this is is a referenced JavaScript file, it happens to be called kinetic, if you're interested in getting kinetic, it's called kinetic underscore four dot JS. And I just simply found that in the jQuery library. This is something that you can go get. It's public access. And personally, I don't know much about uh, jQuery or I'm sorry, I re rephrase that. Personally, I don't know much about JavaScript, but I looked in the library and found one that allowed me to manipulate different images and literally just copied and pasted it. And so what I did is I copied and pasted it after the data URL and before the rest of my HTML. So it looks very daunting and very scary. If you don't know JavaScript, <clears throat> you can find someone that does. Or if you've got a 10-year-old in your neighborhood, I'm sure they know how to do JavaScript. But the idea is it's all HTML. So I preceded the script, and then we've got some additional information in here that references that script and does things like mouse overs and whatnot. And here you see those uh, references again to the images. I got three images this time. I've got uh, an image for the person, which I can move around. So part of the JavaScript is letting me move this person around. And the other part is allowing me to drag it on top of something. And now it looks like I've just seated the, the person into the chair, but really what I've done is I've instructed it when I get into a certain area with the first one and I release, then I want to load the person in chair image. So there's really three uh, images here. So again, I know it seems a little daunting, but I just want to let you know what's possible with FileMaker Pro. This is really just a very rudimentary example, but tried to get the imagination going. So what I'm actually doing there is just some JavaScript inside my HTML, a little bit of CSS, and I'm referencing images that are stored in a container. Now here's my favorite part. I can take all that same code and add one more step to it. <coughs> here's one more step. So here's that same code again. Don't be afraid of it. But now what I'm adding down in the HTML section is something that's called is a call. 
So I have a little function that I've said that when I drag this person over that seat, not only do I want to load the third image, the in-seat image, but I want to run something that's a FMP colon slash slash, and then I reference a file, and you see what I'm doing here is I'm running a script. I've got a script in this database that's called report drag position, and what it does is it takes some, put some text, and then it takes two variables, dollar sign left and dollar sign top, and it displays the values of those variables. The interesting thing is this HTML is calling back to the database and running a FileMaker script, but it's also passing it two variables, dollar sign left, which is the value of 300, and dollar sign top, which is the value of 200. So all that together allows me to drag this person onto a seat, and when I release it, it runs a script, and in this case, the script just shows the dialog window. So these are some demo files that I put together. Again, it's not in the exercise files. These are things that I put together for myself for the purposes of uh, various other presentations. I wanted to share this with you because it's really, this is the, in, the sort of the inception of some very exciting and compelling things that are moving forward in the FileMaker world. It combines FileMaker web viewer layout object, data URLs, FMP URLs, a little bit of JavaScript, some CSS, and some HTML5. Put all that stuff together and you get some really compelling and imaginative things that you can do right inside uh, the layouts in your FileMaker databases. Now, if you're interested in more information on this, I've written a free article that can be found at this address, www.isolutions-inc.com forward slash html5.html. And I cover all of the different demonstrations that we went through here with a lot more detail on data URLs, HTML5, JavaScript, even point back to some of the lynda.com essential training titles, and I even talk about the FMP URLs, which I think are also very fascinating. So I appreciate you taking the time to look at this. I happen to think that after many years in the FileMaker market, this combination of technologies is going to lead to some of the most dynamic and creative and impressive things that we're going to see embedded into FileMaker layouts that possibly we've seen ever.